Most of us take it for granted that we can pick up a phone anytime, dial a few digits, and within seconds be able to talk clearly with somebody across town, across the country, or even across the ocean. Today, placing a call is so simple that it's easy to underestimate what it takes to make that call possible. To have nationwide telephone service requires the ability to connect together, on demand, any two of the nation's almost 170 million telephones. And since that involves some 14 million billion possible telephone connections, that is no simple task. Of course, it wasn't always that way. At first, Alexander Bell's invention was used primarily for lecture hall demonstrations. It hadn't been put into practical use because of the problem of connecting each new customer with all the others. If you wanted to call several individuals, a complicated wiring scheme was needed. But in May 1877, an experimental switchboard was developed. Telephone lines were terminated at jacks, and cords equipped with plugs on each end were used to make connections. This centralized termination point made it possible to build a manageable and orderly system. Eventually, the manual system of connecting telephones was replaced by automatic switching systems using dials. Incidentally, the first dial phones in the country were in use at Milwaukee City Hall switchboard back in 1896. The ability to dial long distance directly began in 1953, and by now, it's nearly universal in use. Today, the dial frontier has moved to the international network with one out of four Bell system telephones able to dial directly to international points. Without the introduction of dial telephones and automatic switching, it's been said that nearly half the nation's population would have to be employed as operators to handle the more than 600 million calls that are carried daily on today's telephone network. <laughs> Although today's nationwide telephone network automatically provides direct and alternate routes for calls, the system can also be controlled by human intervention to keep calls flowing between every exchange in the country. This occurs in the network management control centers, where round-the-clock watch is kept on calling patterns. For example, if there's heavy early morning calling along the East Coast, say New York to Miami, human action could be taken, rerouting calls through California where most callers are still sleeping. While that might seem as matter of course as a road crew setting up a detour, today's nationwide telephone service almost defies analogy. No other service is expected to be so all-encompassing. There are other services, such as electrical power, which the public expects to be universally available. But no other service requires the capability of providing a two-way connection between virtually every household and office in the country. Unlike transportation services, the telephone network must provide door-to-door, -door, as well as city-to-city -city connections, even to remote calling areas, regardless of the time of day. And telephone customers make no reservations. Instead, they set the schedule and expect to call anywhere, anytime, without delay. To make this possible, nationwide telephone service requires an unusually high degree of interdependence among the components of its delivery system. A malfunctioning communications device or a blockage in a local switching center, say in Milwaukee, can have a direct impact on callers as far away as California and New York as well as those in the immediate area. Our message telephone system, with its fast and complex hierarchy of switching centers, exists for one reason, to get the message through and as quickly as possible. Hi, I'm a call. Oh, there's my cue. Time to go to work. Of 
course, not everyone gets through every time. I'm sorry. All circuits are busy now. Let me hear your call. We gotta get through. This is a recording. This call failed apparently because it was placed during a busy period, which normally is during the business day. But there are other times when seemingly everyone wants to make a call, such as after a holiday or during severe weather. Despite constant manual as well as automated management of the telephone network, when too many calls hit at once, some of them are going to be blocked. This normal phenomenon, which we've just seen, is known as no circuit. It's normal because the system has been designed to run at high efficiency, but not to handle every possible call during a peak period. Now, occasionally, large calling volumes can cause serious congestion in the telephone network. This usually occurs when an advertisement or promotional announcement triggers an onslaught of calls to one customer who doesn't have enough lines, equipment, or people to handle the calls. Ironically, such a situation occurred with an AT&T ad. When it comes to telephones and telephone services, you want choices, and Bell's got them. So many different styles, colors, and service features, they fill a whole catalog, the Phone Center Store catalog. For your free copy, all you have to do is dial this toll-free number, 800-243-5588. Call now and discover a great new way to shop the system, the Bell system. Too many callers trying to reach the same number at the same time can cause blockage of the telephone network throughout entire regions of the country. In this case, we estimate over one quarter of a million people tried to reach that number within seconds of each other. The result? Serious machine congestion with a line terminating in New Haven, Connecticut. This in turn caused calls to back up to the regional center at White Plains and the total effect was felt as far away as Norway, Illinois. Needless to say, the nationally advertised prime time commercial was rapidly pulled off the air. Now, an overloaded switcher doesn't handle anyone's call very well, and as we've just seen, anyone with a compelling message can jam the telephone network. To avoid the complications that arise from large calling volumes which can be foreseen, such as those to broadcast stations, Wisconsin Telephone developed a special call handling system called a choke network. Prior to the choke network, when thousands of people dialed a broadcast station, their calls were processed normally and funneled into the one switching center serving the broadcaster, eventually overloading the circuits and interrupting service to all customers going through that center. With the choke network, designated by the prefix number 799, Switching centers have been instructed to automatically hold back all but a few of those calls headed for the same number. This decreases the flow of calls into the switching center, serving the broadcaster and alleviates its backup conditions. But when a broadcaster announces there'll be a sustained period of mass calling, such as taking the 100th caller, this prompts people to stay on the phone and try again and again. Hey, listen, fellas and gals and buddies and pals, there's a pot of gold right here at KRAJ if you can out Blondie the KRAJ Leprechaun. That's right, so don't squawk. Get him the forward and talk. I want to see my little lights of Lincoln. Whoa, there they go right now. That's out of sight, fellas and gals. But first, let me tell you about William Blackhead's Organo Zip. That's right, Organo Zip. The blemish cream that perfects your imperfection. It's soothing. It's grooving. It's destruction to your eruption. And it's on sale this week at all 50 value stores, only $3.49. Isn't that something else again? Hey, it's great working here at the Carrageous One. But you know what? I'll tell you, my boss is a little too old. In fact, he's so old, his social security number is two. <laughs> and now, gadget kids, while I take the first five calls right now, here's the sound that's picked to click. These are the ultimates in summer in the suburbs. <laughs>
multiply that pattern by thousands of callers, and it's easy to see that the circuits are tied up in not one, but several telephone switching centers. Eventually, the complications which the special choke network was designed to alleviate are instead compounded. Within a short time, the facilities can be so overworked that they can't even provide a dial tone, delaying or denying telephone service to a large area for a prolonged time. The effect can be serious, interrupting telephone service to someone who might have an emergency. Waukesha Fire Department Chief Fred Baumgart recalls it all too well when a local television station sponsored a Santa Claus call-in in December 1975. Well, that night, our Telephones are out of service completely for about 25 minutes, 25 minutes to a half an hour. We could not receive any emergency calls in the department, the police department, the sheriff's department. That meant that there was no way that we could respond to a call of any nature, of any type that we received. On checking with the telephone company, we found that there was a call-in program for a Santa Claus contest or something of that nature, which had tied up the phone lines. And they checked further with the stations and asked them not to do it because of what was happening. We have not had any problems since, but we anticipate that you can have with the call-in programs they have today yet. In this case, not only were switching centers tied up, but directory assistants and operators were swamped with questions about how to reach the number, even 30 minutes after the call-in was over. People have a right to be concerned when their telephone service is disrupted because of the way someone else is using it. And so does Wisconsin Telephone as a provider of a public service. This situation can do more harm than good for broadcasters and their sponsors as well, with a backlash of calls from frustrated listeners who've been unsuccessful in reaching the station. This can be avoided if you, as broadcasters, will consult the telephone company's marketing department before starting a major contest, promotion, or call-in. Wisconsin Telephone's marketing specialists know your unique communications needs, as well as the capabilities of the telephone network. They can combine their expertise with the support of telephone company network engineers to make it work for you, the customer, and the telephone company. To assist you with your planning of mass call-ins, we've prepared this special booklet with suggestions which will help avoid telephone congestion. The booklet is included in a kit of timely and informative pamphlets, which we think you'll find interesting and useful. All of us, as Americans, take it for granted that our telephones will always work. It's no accident that the United States is the world leader in communications and the Bell system intends to keep it that way.